good gear with no clutch. It, it, it ain't like nothing else. Well, look at the old Gatorade logo on the ground. You got AC in this thing? <laughs> I was told it was in Days of Thunder. You, you get chills, man. Yeah, it's got like a whole the Moody switch panel. Yeah, it's old. We are on the way to Rockingham Speedway right now. Apparently it's less abandoned than it used to be and they're actually starting to do stuff there again. So we're gonna check it out and check out some vintage stock car stuff. I really don't know what's gonna be there. But we should be able to wander the track grounds and look at some of the facilities. We're in Marshville, North Carolina right now and there's like a house on fire, like for real. Oh wow. If you like the shirt I'm wearing in this video, you can find that at staplesandautoworks.com. We will check out the rest of these at the end of the video. Made it. This place is like a giant North Wilkesboro almost. It's like abandoned, but it's not. I don't know. The back of that billboard says Winston Cup Series on it. It's all faded out. I mean, this is awesome. I'm so pumped to be in here right now. area it's like some of this has been repainted or progressively redone except this this looks like my grandparents house yeah this is some there's some history left in here that's for sure what's in here an old desk it smells old in here too i wonder what this office used to be for during NASCAR races if there were like garage officials in here or something. I never thought I would hear a Lumina Cup car make noise at Rockingham. They're making him run the road course thing here. That you can hear him wherever he is. He needs to get out there with that Rusty Wallace car. The way those things echo through like the grandstands and stuff, you just can't duplicate that. How did I end up here right now? Uh, well, I saw all the cool NASCAR stuff you were doing, and I was like, hey, this is a guy that is interested in the same things that we are. So I was like, hey, might enjoy this. So uh, our group is called Stock Car Classics. We're just some guys that are into the older cars, uh, like this car behind you, the Roy Turner car. We've got some guys that are into the iconic stuff like this. Uh, we've got a Days of Thunder movie car in the group. He's a big Pontiac enthusiast and he found his way to us. And then my car is kind of a family heirloom kind of thing. Uh, and we're just trying to put them back on track and get people involved. Just trying to show people how easy it is to have fun with these things, keep them going. So what's the story on this particular car? So this particular car is a miracle, at least for me. Um, my family used to run in NASCAR in the Bush Grand National Series uh, full time from 87 to 2001. This car was built in 89 as a Pontiac and then due to an aerodynamic rule, we went to Chevrolet for one year. They had a template that had a hook on it and all the Pontiacs had short deck lids. So at the big tracks like here at Rockingham, they were loose all the time. Hmm. So we, we'd always been GM, so they said, all right, we'll go with Chevrolet. So 94, we took one of our old short track cars and put aluminum body on it. This is a 94 Chevrolet aluminum. Uh, we ran V6s back then too. Anyway, so we set this up as a road course car for 94 and ran it uh, with Jim Bound as the driver and lights off the sponsorship for the first year. And at the end of 94, lo and behold, they changed the aero rule. So we decided to go back to Pontiac because they had a nice small team program. They were pretty good for uh, helping out small teams with supplies. So we went hmm. back to Pontiac. So this was our oldest chassis at the time. It wasn't going to be worth it to rebody it as a Pontiac again, so we sold it to a man uh, named Tom Forgione in New York. And he wanted to go Bush North Racing, which is like a sister series. If you're familiar with like ARCA, mm -hmm. that's like a sister series that's lower than Cup, but they use similar cars. So this car fit right in at Bush North, so we sold it to him complete with the uh, Oddfire V6 turnkey ready to go, just as you see it today, sold it to him. So he kept it and uh, he ran a few races at Watkins Glen. That's what it's currently set up for. 
And anyway, he got tired of doing that. He ran with SVRA for a while, vintage racing in the 90s, even when he wasn't that old. <laughs> And uh, he kept it around, and just lo and behold, through Facebook, I'd always wanted to build one of our old cars because, you know, a lot of race car guys are nostalgic, but some of them aren't. We didn't have any cars left over. And so I was like, I'm gonna build aluminum, you know, because that was my favorite car. I was born in 93, so this is probably the first one I saw. So I went to searching, and I said, NASCAR aluminum, and the guy said, yeah, I got this one for sale, and it looks exactly like this. And uh, it turns out it was our car, I found it back in February. Uh, it had been updated with the uh, V8 motor. Yeah, what's the setup in here? So, like I said, for 87 to 94, they ran V6s. There was Buick uh, and Chevrolet V6s for the GM guys. Ford guys didn't have a big program, but they ran odd fire 280 cubic inch, uh, basically a 4.3, but just to the max. Brodick's top end, common pin crank. Anyway, so in 95, the Bush Series went to uh, V8 engines. So they were an 18 degree uh, valve angle V8, 358, just like the Cup Series. So when Tom bought this car and went Bush North racing in 95, he put this 18 degree 358 small block in it. So it's making about 720 horsepower, basically turned it into a Cup car. Okay, so this is a period correct 18 degree small block? Pretty much, it's a, it's a, it's a period correct for 1995. Okay. So it's, uh, you know, basically a Brodix top end, shaft rockers, 8,000 RPM, got a Jericho four speed, nine inch rear, you know, just pretty much like any cup car you would have seen from about 89 to 99. Uh, same drivetrain and all that stuff. Huh. So anyway, I found it and it was already like the car I was gonna build. So I said, well, I'll just buy this one. And uh, it's, it's had every body panel put on it. It's been raced consistently since 89, professionally and, you know, recreationally like we're doing today. And uh, so we just pretty much did some cosmetic work uh, got some got some period correct decals to put on it, some fresh slicks, set it up. Uh, my dad's still a crew chief in uh, the Camper World Truck Series. He's with Chase Purdy with GMS right now, and we took it down there, and he checked it out, nut and bolted it like we were going to take it to the racetrack. And uh, this is my second time out with it in competition, and it's uh, it's a hell of a run. Are you living the dream? Pretty much, yeah. Uh, it's it's pretty surreal, and I, I didn't know how I would react, you know, if I ever did find one of our old cars and didn't really have faith, you know, because they all get wrecked or scrap and when i found it i didn't know what i was going to do so i saw it and just got in it and i pretty much told myself look all these parts are really available it's all the same as it is today almost you know it's same uh same control arm same clip style same motor all this stuff i said it's already had every part put on it might as well just keep running it <laughs> you know even if we scuff it up or something like that that's what it's been doing it's not like uh, Keith's beautiful example here. This is a, an amazing Roy Tyner car, uh, Pontiac Grand Prix. Uh, he'll tell you more about it too. This car, you've probably seen this picture. You ever seen the picture of the Mike Curb number two Dale Earnhardt car sitting in the junkyard? Uh, yeah. Everybody's seen it. It's an old like Polaroid looking thing. Yeah. It looks like it was in the 90s or the 80s. And everybody wondered, oh, why did they leave that? Well, this car was in the same junkyard. Really? At the same time. Wow. And Keith bought this car in 92. I know I'm rambling, but he, he you can see the quality of this build. He's doing Roy Tyner uh, a big justice here, and it's it's a beautiful car. He actually turned a couple laps with it earlier today. Didn't think I'd ever hear aluminum make noise at Rockingham. Yeah. That's yeah. like, this is cool. You get goosebumps the first couple of times. Watch the sun come up this morning. We rolled the garage doors up like they did back in the day, and it was like, you, you get chills, man. It was, it was pretty cool. Places like this, they just don't lose that, that feeling that you get when you come here. I feel it. I don't think the hair on my arms has stood back down since you pulled out of here. Yeah, it's 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 like looking back in time, and I'm just I'm just glad to be a part of it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm truly blessed to even find it in the first place, and to be able to do it, it it's it's awesome. I plan to build more. Joe's got one over here. He's working on that 27 car. He's going to build more. We're going to try and we're we're not quite Aaron Brown level just yet, but <laughs> but we want to we want to get there. Yeah, I need I need one of these now. That's yeah. that's it. Like I, I have to have one. They're out there. They're out there. I, need I can to... fix you up some parts. Yeah. The it... are all the same. You can build whatever you want. I don't know if it has to be alumina, but... So back then, they actually used factory sheet metal on the trunk and the hood of these things they still. Did. So in the 80s, it was like legitimately GM part number stamped on them like you can put on a car. You had to pull them out yourself. So 
Yeah. As you can see, this has still got all the support in the trunk. Yeah. Later on, they would just give you the scan and you can build it however you want to. Is all this patching in here from yeah. when it got rebodied from right. Pontiac so, to Chevy? So this is a beat down race car, as you can tell. It's tapped the wall a few times. They've hammered it back out. They put new, new crush panels in it and stuff. Like I say, I mean, it's, it's very sustainable because you can still get a lot of these parts. But like I was saying before, in the 80s, it was basically stock parts. And then so mid through the 90s, now this is a, a purpose-built fiberglass bumper cover. Yeah. At the very beginning, it was still rubber. Like you got them, like on the nose, you can tell they came super aerodynamic already. But, you know, in the beginning, it was literally old plastic stuff that you could put on a factory car, and they just modified the heck out of it to fit. Oh, yeah, this is locking clean because it's got the fuel fill on that side. Yeah, this one, uh, this one should have a drive brake, but where it's road course certified for competition now, they require a locking cap. Huh. But it's on this side because it's a road course car. Yeah, because that's where the pits are. Correct, at correct. Line. This hood, this is a factory skin that's been hauled out, and they put these braces in there, you know, for that. Yeah. But this bumper cover here, this is a later one. This is probably from 94, uh, one of the last ones they made. You can see it's obviously custom. And this thing popped up for sale about two years ago. It was on Facebook Market and it disappeared. And I was like, well, someone bought the car, no big deal. And I was talking to a buddy of mine and he said, no, I know the guy that's got that car. If you still want to buy it, I can try to put everything together. So the car was in way on the other side of Chicago. We live just outside of Anderson, South Carolina. So between me and the seller and my buddy, we went back and forth about two months and I didn't really know what it was when I bought the car. I just knew it looked like a Rusty Wallace car. It looked close enough, so I was gonna just kind of roll the dice. On it. So we got up there and we got the deal done. Got the car home and like everything else, you kind of start doing all the research on everything and trying to figure out exactly what you've got. And when I got the car, I was told it was in Days of Thunder. And it's still got the camera mounts are still welded to your A post on the inside of the roll bar. So I kind of believe that part of the story. Where is that? They're on this side up here. There's three pilots there on both sides of it. So they would pull the windshield out of the car and then put those giant cameras they used back in the 90s. So yeah. I guess they would film the driver, or like, you know, as a chase car, they would film the other car. So I believe that part of the story. Yeah, it is there. actually purchased the car from uh, Hendrick Motorsports and so when they were done filming the movie uh, Rick Hendrick had apparently had an auction and they sold all the cars off out of the movie and the guy still had the paperwork and stuff saying that this was definitely the car that was in the movie and I spoke to a guy that worked for Rick and he also worked for Paramount and when I just sent him pictures of the car um, he said that I'm pretty sure this is true he said that so the fictitious cars in the movie, Hendrix built those cars, but they went around to all the teams and they bought their show cars up. So this car, I'm, I'm assuming the Richard Petty car and that stuff were all former show cars from the teams. He said they went to Blue Max Racing, who at that point in time, Rusty Wallace drove for. And he said that was actually a real Blue Max show car. And I've spoke to the people that worked for the crew at that point, and he's, they said, you know, because there's liability involved if you say, yeah, that's definitely that car, unless you've got paperwork saying it. But he said, most likely, that's a real car, and if as old as this chassis is, they would have bought the chassis from MC Anderson when uh, Raymond Beetle, who owned Blue Max Racing, he bought out MC Anderson out of Savannah, Georgia. So this would have started off as a Valvoline Kelly Arborough car, and then it would have ended up being a Tim Richmond car, and then it, Kind of evolved over the years in their show car. So it could have been a bunch of different exactly. things. You can kind of, when I found out it was in the movie, I started watching the closer and started seeing it in the back there and stuff. But there's the scene when they're supposed to be at Bristol and it's a night race and they're all standing there by the wall after the race is over. And um, what's his name? Uh, John C. Riley. He said, he makes that joke about, there's a panel we don't have to fix, and then Robert Duvall kicks us out of the car. If you look behind that car, uh, this car is sitting right there, right behind it. In this livery? Yeah. Just like it is, now? it is right now? Yeah, it's got like a hole in the Moody switch panel. Yeah, that's a hole. 
chassis, uh, the stuff I found on the car that has dates on it's from like 1983. 83? So right now, it's still got the engine and transmission that was in it when they filmed it. I haven't had a chance to pull this stuff out yet. So basically, I'm driving it until I kill it. Is it an 18 degree small block? Just a regular old small block 350. You probably, out of a, a, probably out of a truck or something. So it's not even like a race car motor. Oh man. Sounds like it. That does look like a truck motor. Yeah. Check out that radiator. It's basically serving a purpose right now. That radiator is a is a is a prime example of the period correct parts. That that radiator would probably with this chassis. Yeah. You know, that doesn't look fancy, but that's what works. That's is that brass? Miles. Yeah, brass and copper and all that stuff together. Yeah, they had them, but I mean that's what they ran 200 with first way back then. I've got a dry sump 434 with AFR heads on it sitting back in the shop waiting for this thing. I just didn't have time to do it before we came out here. So. Well, can you fire it up? Can you hear what this one sounds like? Oh, this is like a rear steer box yeah. chassis. Yeah. This is a super speedway car. It's just manual steering. Uh, really tall. It's got a 256 rear in it. Yeah. Wow. That's funny because it, it doesn't really have the thunder from the compression at idle, but when you rev it, it still kind of sounds the same. It's called race car. It's the, the pipes make everything great. <laughs> and the firing order. Oh yeah. I think it's the small block firing order. It just it, it just does that. It's the LS engine does not sound like that for nope. those. Nope. I want to take a cam and have it ground to the old firing order and switch coil packs around oh, yeah. to yep. see if we can get an LS motor to sound like an old small block. Definitely, definitely. Be That's gonna happen. So you see that nose right there where we were talking about the, the 80s versus the 90s parts? Yeah. That's an older style bottom nose there where the cowl is. So later on, they got a little more racy. Later on, they didn't have all that extra on the bottom. See where it looks like it's got a splitter, you know? Yeah, That's it's like real. The first rendition, like an 88 or an 89 Pontiac Grand Prix nose. Probably like 93. Was yeah, flat. 93, it's it was super flat. aero. All you had to do was cut your brake ducts in. It was super trick, really nice. But, I mean, these cars, they took a lot of pride in building them things. You see all that B-roll front up there? I mean... Yeah. These, these things were worried. Uh, that's so freaking awesome. What's under the trunk? Is there anything cool to look at in there? Yeah. It's a really old race, so. You can see the factory yeah. deck lid yeah. deal. And right here, same deal. Yeah. This was like the trunk thing. This is a factory part. Like I guess they call it the package tray. Yeah. But that's that's a factory part. They just trimmed and tacked it in. They would have got that from Pontiac and yeah. tacked it in. And here's the factory number for yep. the whatever. Well, not not factory like streetcar, but Pontiac from GM. GM produced this this yeah. panel here. Yeah, exactly. But you can see even in this car, I mean, the fuel cells are the exact basic, you know, same dimensions, mine will bolt into his, his will bolt into mine, even a, a car from the 2010s and even later. The theory is all the same. Yeah, I need one. Yeah, they're out there. If you find any for sale, send them to me. Oh, <laughs> you know, messed up now, you'll get them all. We'll send them day after day. They're, they're hiding everywhere, man. Some people hoard them away. Some people uh, won't, you know, the typical, I'm gonna fix it up one day. And some people, like my dad, you know, they got done with them, either sold them or crushed them. But they're, one, they're out there. I found one sitting in a guy's front yard. He's sitting in a front yard. Yeah, with a it's, old, it's old Joe Nita chick with yeah. the car. You know, and then they got them up in their rafters. You know, they're, they're like muscle cars. You can still get them for cheap though, sometimes. Uh, but they're out there. This thing is so freaking cool. You can tell it's got the factory upper arms in it. They're just kind of plasma cut out and factory cowls carved out to get air to the carburetor. It's like this little tricks they did. Like he was saying, this thing was, it was, it's a real car. It was in a, in that junkyard with the Dale, old Dale Earnhardt car. So I would imagine that all that was like already carved out when he got it. He just kind of cleaned it up and painted what he had to. And so the factory dash in it starts with the key. This is just the coolest thing ever. Somebody probably welded those bars in 1972. I don't know what this is here. It's like, I wonder if this is like post-race tech inspection or something. An station. And they have a power shower too. Here's Victory Lane. Oh, a helicopter pad. 
Oh, maybe this was the infield care center because it's right next to the helipad. That would make sense. What is that? The classic championship, some Richard Childress event function was probably the last thing here. They put something on there for, and they just left it there. Man. Oh my gosh. What? It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Think about all the freaking cars that sat there, all the people. Look at the old Gatorade logo on the ground. Man, I think that it had been painted over. Either that or it just didn't, it faded off the black but not the white. Man, can you guys believe all this stuff is still here? Like, I'm so glad they're doing stuff here again to keep this place from getting destroyed or dilapidated beyond repair. Like, wow. There's graffiti on the walls. People have broken in here and messed with stuff, which is a shame. If you're into this kind of thing, you better hit that subscribe button because we're just getting into the skin of it right here. This is just the beginning. I wonder what kind of pole, some poles there. You know I'm gonna have to spend like four hours on freaking Google searching victory lane pictures to see how this evolved or what would have gone on here with that building in the background and all kinds of stuff. This was the motor coach parking because I have a picture of our Newell sitting over there. It's a picture that someone took from turn one. And you can see whenever it was Robbie Gordon's, it was parked over there right across from Jeff Burton's, right on the inside here. It's, I'll, I'll dub that picture in right there. But you can see all the 50 amp hookups from those things are still there. I wonder if they still work. You can see in that picture uh, I showed you of the Newell sitting over there that there was like this nice black fence between the pits and the area and this chain link now but it still uses the same the same poles so you can see the structure where it would bolt in is is still like where it was but at some point they took those slats down and replaced it with chain link for whatever reason i wonder what used to go in there My foot. your foot i guess it does now we found the original fence and you can see that it's still it's still up in a lot of places over there it must have just got damaged or maybe they had to tear it out for some kind of event or something. It must have been where the race gas pumps were. It's got Sonoco and Boston in the glass. Look at those old TVs in there. Old TVs? Yeah. Like the ones that are like boxes? Yeah. What kind of fuel do you run this thing on? Uh, I run they used to run 112 leaded and you can still get that so i run leaded 112. uh it's making probably 12 and a half to one compression so pretty straight up for that uh sunoco racing fuels this is like the original gm ignition boxes yeah those are uh, the gm heavy duty uh, ignition and then they've got the uh soft touch rev limiter by gm those are basically msd 6al boxes that's a GM tack. All the old GM race cars used to have them. Uh, the rest of the gauges are kind of a hodgepodge, but that one in the middle was kind of a signature move we put in there. That's the low oil pressure light, because uh, normally you're not looking at the gauges. Uh, I thought uh, that might be a shift light. Well, no, that would be in the tack, but that wasn't really a common thing back then, because you know you're always in high gear. Yeah. Most of the time. Uh, so as you see, there's two ignition boxes, and I got some switches over there. These are these are wired fail safe, so if one fails you just flip the switch or unhook the other wiring harness there and switch mid-race. So if it dies, which they're known for doing, you've got a backup box. Okay. Uh, this being a road course car, the switches are in the middle, those boxes are in the middle, everything's kind of as low as you can possibly get it. Uh, and that's just kind of to make sure that everything's distributed correctly at that point. Uh, this is a straight rail chassis. You know, most of the, the circle track cars are offset, but short track car can be straight up and you can make it do whatever. But as far as the ignition goes, being fail safe, it's got two coils and everything up under there. Kind of an old school setup. Okay. Like they used to have it. Yeah, so that. when they come in, raise the hood up, I flip that switch in the middle. You can swap coils around just to make sure you don't, you know, lose a few laps for nothing. You said these are Brodix heads? Are they those Pontiac 862 heads? Or uh, are they they're similar to that. They're These are technically bow tie heads, but they're like a Brodix track one or track two. They're pretty similar to that. 
and it's got a motor plate, which is typical of the year. But I mean, it's it's just really it's just a hopped up small block Chevy, pretty much. I mean, it's iron block, you know, four bolt main, billet main caps. Uh, got a billet crank in it, uh, Carrillo rods, CP pistons, stuff like that. Just companies that have been around for a while. When was the last time this motor has been through? Like gone over. This particular one's pretty fresh. Uh, this was set up, this is actually an Arca spec engine. It was taken to an Arca engine builder and he built it to what they would run. Uh, the good old GM soft tuck rev limiter. I did some welding. I put some new pipes on and I unplugged all that stuff. <laughs> and uh, my buddy asked me and I come back in, he said, how many RPM are you turning? I said, well, I think my tax wrong. It says I'm turning like 8,500. There's no way. I've got an 8,000 RPM chip in it. Looked over, box is unplugged. Yeah. <laughs> So the, the, it's got jazzle shaft rockers and you know stainless headers, just typical stuff that's been used for how, a long, long time. How many RPM were you turning when you were coming around the front stretch here? Um, I probably shifted it about 7,500, just easing it through. Um, it's got a, a dual disc clutch in it, but it's got a pretty tall first, and I've, I've kind of put a hurting on it. So if I really lay the power in up top, it'll, sometimes it'll shatter under load. Something I got to fix during the winter a fan actually off of a Chevy Celebrity factory you know go to the junkyard take it off moves a lot of air doesn't draw a lot of amps is that's, that original or did you put that there no that's that was kind of like commonplace like really? when we built these cars that's you know that was the before there was a lot of aftermarket support you know hey Chevy Chevy Celebrity fans work really good GM Performance is going to send you two of them because you're building a car oh. that's just what they would do stuff like this would fall by the wayside and it's just every year it's something better and better and better better snouts better parts better brakes better engines you know just four years later you got an SV2 which is like the quintessential 9,000 rpm engine that you think of it like Daytona you know yeah. and they progress to the RO7 it's just everything you see here it's, it's weird it's all dinosaur technology that hasn't changed in 30 years but every little piece of it has been improved incrementally as, as much as it possibly can. It's funny how it's always something a little better, a little better, a little better, a yeah. little better, until you realize, crap, that thing way back then was cooler than exactly. this. Exactly, yeah, that too. I mean, like I said before, <laughs> rubber nose, fiberglass nose, carbon fiber nose. There we are. We got, uh, but we still got 15 inch steel wheels with a five on five lug pattern like you might have For called. now. Yeah, well, I mean, well, for getting, now. They're getting rid of that. Finally, but you gotta remember that ran from then, from the 70s up till today until next year but yeah. i mean but in a 10-year span it went from good old boys working on it to now we got engineers i don't have stainless headers anymore i got ink and nail i don't have you know 8500 rpm i got 9600 you know all that stuff it's yeah. just every year you have to be on the cutting edge you get left behind and but it's still nice to look at something like this it's 30 years old and see all the similarities to something that's 2017 2018 2019 mm. it's still competitive still doing the same thing still got truck arms still got a-frames you know until next year next yeah. end oh my god it's rusty wallace <laughs> <laughs> we need quite. turn here wait it's there what's that you don't know what you don't know what i'm talking about the turn here <laughs> exactly. yeah. You got AC in this thing? Damn. <laughs> well, we convinced all these guys to come back out. everything just make everything sound like 15% better than it does anywhere else. So cool. about him but I know I know who he is man 
I want to go in there so bad. You could tell that he was getting a little squirrely. The charger guy. Buddy, I hope you find your dad. See how the tailpipes are white? Yeah. That's because it's leaded fuel. Huh. Yeah, you see old cop cars that got white out of the tailpipes? That's why. Good stuff. Best part about it is tailpipe. It is. So you got that <laughs> white on there. This thing sounds so much better than everything else on the track. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it does uh, it does what it should. It's like two times louder than everything. Yeah. What do you what do you feel like when you're in there and you're you're winding that tag up? Oh, I feel like a legend, man. <laughs> like uh, I'm the guy. Like I like I'm Cole Trickle Jr. right here. It's what it feels like. But no, it's just you watch that thing. You see that you see the typical old you know auto meter font. You jamming that gear with no clutch. It, it it ain't like nothing else. You can ship this thing with no clutch. Oh it, yeah, you just pull it and it goes. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Uh, second second best thing about it is the transmission. First is the pipes and the eight thousand RPM. The rest of it is this transmission. You just great. Good. My clutch is about history, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Need to set it up for Rockingham. She's a little light on springs in the front, but uh. I think you know a guy that can help you with that. Yeah, I think we can figure that out. Dad. Yeah, hey, <laughs> let's uh, let's pull out the old notebook. I need one of these real bad. They're out there. If anybody has one of these that doesn't want to sell them or knows where one is, you send me an email. Uh, the email in the video description. Send me whatever you find. You ever notice the similarities of Illumina to the trucks of the same years? Yeah. The yeah. same, the, I think the guy's name is like Chuck Jordan who designed both of them. Huh. That's like the way, this looks like a 95 truck hood. I always wondered why I liked the Lumina so much. It's like the same. It's one of the meanest, best looking race cars ever made. The, the, the Lumina, in my opinion. This is just a 105 wheelbase car. One, 110s look even meaner. You see a nice Lumina, like super speedway car, done up just right, body work, nice paint job, the Western Auto one. Uh -huh. They are mean looking. The only thing meaner is probably an Aero Coupe. You know the, the GM car, yeah. but in my opinion, one of the meanest modern-looking cars is aluminum. After that, just ain't there. I could I could go for like a you know a 2002 Monte Carlo. Yeah, the Twisted Sisters they kind of got their own deal where they're all skewed and all that. They're all right. I liked them before they went to the wide headlights. Yeah, like yeah. Two th 2000 to through 2002. Right. I would I would right. mob one of those for sure. For sure. I mean, I would mob any of them, but if I'm being picky, like yeah, if you want to be picky, that's the that's one. that's it. Yeah. It goes, probably goes Lumina or Aero Coupe, Lumina, yeah. 2002 Monte Carlo, you, man. whatever the heck else I could find. Yeah. Number four. <laughs> well, the, the newer cars when they went to you know the new ZL1 body like a 16, 17, mm -hmm. those are mean looking cars, man. People rag on them, but they're nice. So you can get a carbon body car. I mean. They're awesome. I tell you what, those things will be really cool in 20 years whenever everything else looks stupid. Oh, dude, they're, they're, they're never going to not be cool. <laughs> Woo. So you're getting out of the car in victory lane. How do you feel? Like I've never felt before. I feel like a million dollars. Had a great car today. I want to thank Lysol, Goodyear, Goodies, Clevite, Gatorade, Air Equip, Motorsports Design, Diner Max, Stapleton Auto Works, Chevrolet. <laughs> Good run today. Too bad we don't have any hats so you yeah, can like, change your hat hats every four and beer seconds. And Gatorade and all that stuff. Yeah. It'd be great for a bucket of Gatorade right now. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. And that's the same backing of Victory Lane that's been there since like the early 90s. Yep. And I just looked up pictures of it. It's the same thing. Yep. So imagine coming in here at the end of the race, you're tired as can be, you've run, you know, 500 laps, come right in here, press, confetti, beer, Gatorade, <laughs> just going nuts, man. Best time of your life. A lot of history sitting here.
yeah even if so you're standing in here with a with the real live Illumina this makes it even cooler we just bring this thing everywhere everything is cooler when you're standing next to Illumina unless it's a streetcar Illumina then it's worse I can't believe February of 2001 Steve Park pulled in right here My I won't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone, it's guys. Funny as hell. The kryptonite? Yeah, it's my kryptonite because you can't get through it. And oh. you didn't even laugh at my joke. Oh, well, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of dad jokes, if you're a repeat customer on StaplesAndAutoWorks.com, um, Logan started putting dad jokes on your cards so you don't get the same card every time. And they're very, very funny. I think I'm funny. So yesterday was pretty much the coolest thing ever. I know I need my own stock car now. Serious, if you find something for sale or you know somebody that has one and he hasn't listed it for sale, because you know the best things are always the ones that aren't advertised. Send me an email, it's in the description. Also, I want to show you the shirt that I'm wearing, the Western Auto looking shirt. You can find those at stablesandautoworks.com. This is all a new release right here. It just went live on the website. Uh, we got the limited run, the OG intercooler flag design, but with the North Carolina flag on it for all you North Carolina people. We got Western Auto Daryl Waltrip tribute. I designed this one myself. And this is actually printed at uh, Casey Kane's new Kane screen, screen print. Um, deal like all Kyle Larson stuff comes from the same place as this. It's really nice. And we got the Robert Yates Racing Tribute logo shirt too. I really don't know which one of these is my favorite. They're both freaking awesome. We also got the Good Wrench Pit Crew shirt. I see titties with the front of the Uncle George Suburban on it. We have the Western Auto ones in hoodie form too, in a limited quantity. Like really nice, high quality, almost Under Armour style hoodies. We don't use junk around here. And we got the ICT in hoodie form too. Um, we got some shop dog shirts still, but we sold the last small so it came off the display. We also fired up the random option too. So if you go on the site, there'll be a random shirt tab, which is like when we only get down to one or two sizes left of a shirt style, we'll pull the listing from the website because it just takes up room. People ask me why we're out of stock on everything. So we combine them all into a random shirt, pick your size and you get something that's discontinued that we have a few left of which would be like the original original flag shirt the original black good wrench shirt or the patriotic flag shirt that's what we got right now we have up to 6xl on almost everything so and these hats that i'm wearing too if you get a hat you get a rowdy energy sample in your box and excuse this mess right here we're repainting this wall the og staples and auto works hat in small medium lxl those are the ones you see me wearing all the time Every single order is packed and filled here. Every single order gets a handwritten note from Logan, signed by both of us. Turn left onto County Hall. Let's do some bonus footage here. We were just driving along and we saw a stray dog on the road, so we're gonna feed him french fries. There he is, make sure he doesn't get hit. I'm gonna put a hazards on so nobody back there hits him. slow to avoid us. I don't like this. I don't either. You need to get him out of here. Get off the road. Well, if anything, just chase him away from the road. Well, maybe he's part of this around here somewhere. Well, 
He doesn't want to eat. Maybe he'll find those. He's not going to listen to us. Well, there's a lot of people on this road and he's going to die. 